Good day everyone! Today on Mattress Top Take Apart we have, as I promised, a microwave oven. This is our old Danby microwave oven. We bought it in 2004 or 2005. And uh, this thing has finally kicked the bucket after 10 years of trouble-free service. Uh, what happened was the main 15 amp fuse inside it blew. And I figured, alright, probably, you know, maybe the fuse just got weak. Although I personally had my doubts. But uh, I replaced the fuse, I bought a new one, replaced it, and it worked for another two days, and then that fuse blew. So I guess something's gone wrong with this thing, something's starting to short out. It's drawing a larger than normal amount of current, and uh, this thing has finally died. Which is too bad, but you know, 10 years of service out of a $50 microwave oven is, I think, pretty darn good. There's inside it, turntable. Very, very good microwave. It was always, always excellent. I can't really say anything more about it. This thing owes us absolutely nothing. It replaced a Samsung microwave from the 1980s, which my mom bought new way back in the day. I've seen these microwaves, uh, exactly the same type, under a couple different brand names. This one's Danby. I've seen another one branded Danby. And actually, the microwave in my apartment back in Fredericton is exactly the same as this, but it's branded Sylvania. So this, I guess, is what you would call a generic microwave oven, but uh, it's got an LED display, and it's got all the usual controls. It's got power, and it's got defrost, and cook by weight, and it's got some presets there. Uh, on the back here, household microwave oven, there's the model. Damn, be a designer. 800 watts, 4.1 kilovolts, 4,150 4, volts is the output of the transformer. And I'll say this right now, for anyone who ever aspires to take apart a microwave oven, it is imperative that you know the risks before doing so, and I'll outline those uh, as we go along here. These microwave ovens are not something to toy around with, either uh, together or in parts. Apparently that's what they tested the power output with, 275 milliliters of water, approximately. Danby Products, Ontario, or Ohio. No data manufacturer, but we'll probably find that inside. Caution microwaves, made in China. Alright, well, there's screws all the way along here, including some security screws, but uh, I was able to loosen those with a set up a pair of pliers back when I originally replaced the fuse in this and actually they're still loose right now I think I can might be able to get them with my hand but anyway I'll take these screws out and there's two more uh, no one more right there so that's where I'll begin alright once the covers off here's the inside uh, lots of fun stuff here we have the magnetron which generates the microwaves. There's the main power board with that fuse which is probably blown. There's the controlling electronics right there. There's the beeper. And that's probably the microcontroller which handles everything. There we have a transformer. And there we have a capacitor. Now this is what you really need to know safety wise when you're toying with one of these things. First of all, that transformer takes 120 volts in and is able to convert it to, according to the back of this particular microwave, over 4,000 volts. That is not something to play around with. That can kill you instantly. You would be dead before you even knew you were dead. So, you know, I'm going to take out this transformer, but I'm not going to play with it as it is. Probably the first thing I'll do is remove that 4,000 volt secondary winding. Maybe someday I'll rewind it, or maybe I'll just play with it as is with the primary coil, just use it as an inductor, I don't know. But uh, a microwave oven transformer is not something to toy around with unless you absolutely know what you're doing, and uh, therefore take the right safety precautions. As for this capacitor, if we look here, it's rated for 0.88 microfarads at 2200 volts. This capacitor, as well, is able to store a charge capable of instantly killing you. Even when this microwave oven is unplugged, if it has been recently used, that capacitor 
could have a deadly charge stored in it. Uh, after unplugging a microwave oven, if you have to work on it or if you want to take it apart or whatever, it should be left for at the very least a few days to give that capacitor time to discharge. And even after that, you should, and I'm going to do uh, right now, put a multimeter across the contacts there and see if there's any sort of a voltage on it. If there is, you've either got to wait longer or use some safe measure to discharge it. I'll do that right now. While I'm doing that, I'll tell you a story. I told you about the old microwave we used to have, a Samsung unit. I think it was from around 1982 or something. Absolute state-of-the-art machine for its time. But uh, Mom told me that uh, she told me a story once. Back when she was pregnant with my little sister, this would have been in... 1996 uh, that microwave blew its fuse uh, in that microwave's case there was nothing wrong with it the fuse just wore out and uh, when she went to change the fuse looks like there's no voltage across that capacitor when she went to change the fuse uh, she was careless putting her hands inside there I guess the fuse was somewhere near the capacitor and she got shocked and she said you know she was a uh, three or four feet from the wall and uh, yeah this was at dad's house so she would have been three or four feet from between the microwave and the wall uh, the shock she received was so great that it, it blew her into the wall it physically blew her into the wall so uh, yeah that's and you know thank god that's as far as it went it didn't harm mom uh, or evidently my sister but uh You've got to be truly careful when playing around with this stuff. Aha, another thing we have in there is a, well, a rather small C-frame motor. Smallest I've ever seen in person. With a nice plastic blade set. Sweet. I just tested this fuse and it's indeed, indeed it's blown. There could be something repairable uh, with this thing that could be fixed, but, you know, something like a microwave and you know a cheap commodity item like that cheap to buy today uh, it's really no use in trying to diagnose that just a waste of time in my opinion here's the capacitor cool 2200 volts 0.86 microfarads I can uh, have a use for a capacitor like this in my projects not uh, charged to its full potential obviously and uh, I don't know if you can hear this but listen to this of course, this is an oil-filled capacitor, and you can actually hear the oil sloshing around inside it. I've never found an oil capacitor that I could actually hear that with, so that's pretty cool. I wonder if that's the date of manufacture, 2004. That would absolutely make sense. Ah, uh, and that diagram right there means that the capacitor has a resistor inside it in parallel with it so that it discharges itself slowly over time to uh, reduce the safety risk of handling the capacitor. So yeah, a few days and uh, that resistor works to get rid of any charge in the capacitor. And this, which was connected between one of the capacitor terminals and the chassis of the microwave, is an HVM12 diode, a very beefy diode. It has a uh, reverse peak voltage capability of 12,000 volts and it has a forward voltage drop of 13 volts. Huge, huge diode. Interesting. Well, here's the transformer, and uh, man, this thing is huge and heavy. I'd say this must weigh about 10 pounds. Makes up a good percentage of the weight of the entire oven. But uh, if we look at the label here, it doesn't say much. It says danger, high voltage, and a model number there. And I guess a serial number or something. So I'm not really sure, 100% sure, how this wires up, so I'm not going to play with anything. I'm going to do a lot of reading. And then I might remove that secondary winding, I don't know. It's easy to tell, though, which winding is which. You see the primary winding, because that has to handle 15 amps. It's made of just a few turns of really thick wire. And then the secondary winding, which is a very high voltage at just a few milliamps, that has many, many turns of thin wire. Uh, so there's that. And here's the fan. The motor's actually by a company I recognize, Galand. They make a lot of appliance parts, and I believe they've made appliances themselves. But a standard C-frame motor, it's of the type where the rotor is actually 
externally visible which is neat and it's got this nice plastic blade set on it we'll hook this up to power in a bit but all this left now well there's the power board but I don't think there's going to be any useful anything useful from that oh there's the internal lamp and I'll definitely be uh, removing that there's the magnetron which I'm not going to touch and this is something else I should mention never play around with microwave magnetrons again unless you have the training to safely do so, the training and the knowledge. Uh, because magnetrons actually contain ber beryllium, which is extremely toxic to humans. And if you remove the magnetron and you start playing around with the part that actually emits the, uh, the microwaves, and that's the part that's made of beryllium, and you scratch some of the beryllium off, and that gets on your skin, or if beryllium dust gets into the air and you breathe it in, you know, that stuff's extremely poisonous to people, so I'm not even going to touch this. But, uh, I don't know which is the lamp. I think maybe this part might be the lamp, so I'll tackle that next and see what I get out of that. Wow, I've never seen something like this. Here's the lamp. It's 120 volts, 20 watts. And it's actually not in, not a standard screw base socket. This whole thing itself is the bulb. The bulb is glued in this black plastic part. So if it ever burned out, you'd have to buy this whole assembly. I don't quite like that. <laughs> oh well. 125 volt, 20 watts. K, K, E, I, Korea. Interesting. And I do know the bulb is still good. Here's the control panel, something funny, it's got a, a list of stuff, conditions under which not to run the microwave, and the first one is, object that caught indoor. Beautiful, beautiful English. Interestingly, take a look at this, the panel was made by glands. And also, here's the switch mechanism the, that, you know, that the door closes into to uh, activate the appropriate switches so that the microwave will operate. Switches were also made with glands. Uh, I am very certain now that glands what is the OEM of this microwave. All of these microwaves that are under various brand names, they were made by glands. As, as a matter of fact, uh, now that I've thought of it, I've seen microwaves of this design under the glands brand name. So uh, that answers that. Date code, 34th week of 2004. Over 10 years this thing lasted. That's pretty good. So we have a power transformer here. All this probably operates on uh, maybe low, low voltage AC at least, maybe low voltage DC, at least parts of it. Uh, I've got two relays there. One is probably for the magnetron and one is probably for the fan. And there's the beeper and the chip that controls everything. Power transformer. And yeah. Uh, this thing was made during the height of the capacitor plague, but uh, despite that, all the capacitors look good. And uh, these two wires here went to one of these switches, I forget which, but uh, I would assume that when they are open, the control panel won't allow the magnetron to power up because the door's open, and then when the door's closed, it shorts these together, and then it allows everything to work. And I believe power comes in through there, I assume 120 volts. And I'm, I'm uh, wondering now if perhaps, if we were to hook this thing up to power and just operate this panel as is, I wonder if it would, how, uh, how much it would still work, if it would let you set the clock and put in a time and press start and we, you could hear the relays close. I'd be interested to see that. And the transformer has an output voltage of 16 volts and apparently it has a second output voltage of five and a half volts, two, two output taps that are five and a half volts, something like that. All right, I can confirm that 120 volts indeed goes through there, because uh, this is the plug that connects in there. And uh, this blue wire goes right into here, which connects to this red wire, which goes right into here, which connects to this other blue wire, which goes directly to the neutral wire of power. And then the brown wire goes 
to here, which connects to this little brown wire, which passes all the way over to what I assume is a thermal protection switch over there. That passes to this thermal protection uh, switch, which goes all the way to line. And that makes sense because if either of those thermal protection switches uh, opens up because something's overheating, it cuts off power to the entire machine. Makes sense. Power board's also made by glands. All right, let's hook this thing up to power and see what blows up. I do have a light bulb in series in case something does go awry. But uh, let's find out. I'm kind of interested. Oh, I get click. I guess that's it. We're drawing a normal amount of current. <laughs> wow. It works. That's outrageous. Does it let me uh, turn the microwave on? No, it thinks the door is open. I think if I short those two wires out, it'll think the door is closed. Alright, I got those two wires shorted. Let's try it now. Oh no, relay click. That might be a good sign. It's drawing even less current now. So I imagine one of those relays might actually be to turn on the... Uh, light. Oh by god, there it goes. Wow, that's absolutely hilarious. Drawing four watts of power. Man, imagine if you friggin' like mounted this thing on a wall, you'd have the world's most ghetto digital clock with a built-in timer function. It's stuff like this which is the reason I'm in electric I'm in school to become an electrical engineer. This is absolutely hilarious. Let's uh stop it. Put uh, 9 seconds. That is absolutely friggin hilarious. Alright, for my next trick, let's try out the fan. Wow. That moves a lot of air, holy cow. Fifteen watts. A quarter of an amp. 0.49 power factor. I think that had a really cool startup sound. You usually only hear that in vintage motors. Let's listen to that again. That's really cool. It has that kind of uh, mechanical whining startup noise. You fan guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Blowing my hair around. Really neat. Way cooler than that fan, I think. And it doesn't even seem to vibrate. Doesn't vibrate at all, not in the slightest. Well, I say it's decided then. Uh, whenever I get to building a homemade box fan, this is exactly what I'll use, this very motor beautiful doesn't even doesn't even need lubrication and lastly the lamp works and it indeed draws 20 watts of power here's one of the thermal protection switches that's indeed what they are it's a normally closed switch and I would assume when it hits 105 degrees Celsius it opens up so there's that I probably won't have a use for something like this. I wonder if this if uh, this microwave design could date back to as early as 1999 because on the uh, switch uh, assembly here they have one of those tables that uh, where it'll uh, sh show when it was manufactured and it's got three years listed 1999, 2000, and 2001 and of course this was made in 2004 so there's no stamp on any of them but uh yeah, perhaps at least this switch assembly 
dates back to 1999. Wow, what a load of old guff. Well, I can make some use out of at least some of it, maybe even all of it. And uh, all that's left to get out of this is I'll take the wire. There's a synchronous motor down there for the turntable. Right there, but I won't bother with that. I already have a turntable and I doubt I'll ever use it. But uh, yeah, there's that. I'll just take the wire, put it back together, and uh, then it'll go to the dump. So there's a tear apart of a Glanz rebranded Danby microwave from 2004. It served us well, but uh, it was time for it to go, I guess. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed.